my parents were supportive. They they really thought that what I was doing was good, but I know in the back of their head they were thinking, "This kid's fucking ridiculous." <laughs> It has been an entire year, exactly 365 days, since I laid eyes on this yellow 1980 Volkswagen Rabbit pickup for the very first time after a very long stint in that field in central Washington. I am standing right next to the truck. Are you ready to see this thing? The patina is absolutely perfect. <laughs> Oh boy. Now, if you're not familiar, the story behind this truck is really, really interesting and, and sort of daring on my part. So I flew from Columbus, Ohio to Seattle, Washington, where I was picked up by a guy that I did not know. Uh, we were sort of friends on Instagram, but I had spoke to him one time on the phone prior to this trip. Now the plan was he'd pick me up, we'd go back to his dad's house where this truck was sitting, and I would stay there for like three or four days while we rehab this thing so I could try and drive it 2,300 miles home, back to Ohio. At the time, I was believing that this trip in particular, because it had gone viral on TikTok, was my big break and I was stopping at absolutely nothing to make it happen. Now, while that's all well and good, I've only made one video regarding this truck since I've had it back. In that entire year that I've had to talk about it, I've talked about it once. I am on the way to Detroit, Michigan to pick up a 2006 Volkswagen Beetle TDI with a five speed for, uh, for my yellow rabbit pickup. So I bought that new Beetle. I went to film episode two and the wheels absolutely came off of the operation. And I mean that almost literally. is my car, a 2004, which of course was the first year for the BEW, or the PD100, the first step away from the old I can't even believe that I'm standing here looking at this car right now. Somebody turned left in front of me and I am 99.99999 repeating percent sure that they were on their phone. The entire front end is pushed over. The battery was shorted. It caught on fire. And uh, yeah, I mean, just, just everywhere you look, there's catastrophe. It buckled the frame, so the roof's dimpled. Shoved the door back. <sighs> I, I cannot believe this is my car. Granted, I am so happy that I am fine and walked away from this, but I'm devastated. This car was so nice i even like, it, it was this car was so nice i made a video talking about how to buy one of these cars and now i don't have one drove the car for six weeks girl turns in front of me cars totaled so now all of a sudden i have options i have another 1.9 tdi out of this jetta that i had just wrecked and i had this new beetle motor so as i was i had already half filmed episode two of the swap and then i wrecked that car and then what I had filmed regarding the new Beetle didn't make any sense because I decided right then and there to go with the motor that was in that Jetta. This thing ran perfectly before the wreck, and I think it will even after the fact. I'm not so sure about the transmission because it rolls in gear. If I'm lucky, it just popped a CV apart, but truth be told, this was such, a, such an impact. I, I wouldn't be surprised if there's something like a hole in the transmission, I, I don't know. But we're gonna pull it apart and find out because I, I really can't stomach to look at this thing. Um, it's so bad. I...
Vegeta Wreck was on May 2nd, and it really wasn't until mid to late May when I started in on this project full force. Um, I had finally gotten the check back from the insurance company. I tore the car apart, harvested the engine, and I started cleaning it up. I replaced seals, gaskets, installed the swap mounts, um, all those things. And then I started in on the truck itself. So tore it down, tore out the interior, dash, carpet, the windshield, the doors came off, um, and really started from scratch because nothing was working. Uh, it, the truck needed everything. I mean, after it sat out for that long, it was just disgusting, it smelled bad, and nothing worked. So it was really a winner of a, of a chassis to start with. So one of the things I did first was I actually pulled the wiring harness out of the truck because, like I said, nothing worked. So I sourced a late Westy fuse block with a pigtail, and then I scabbed it into the original wiring harnesses in the truck and that actually fixed everything. So all the lights work, the signals work, the brake lights work, um, the dash lights, everything works, the, uh, the clock on the dash runs, um, everything that I wanted to work does. And like even down to the charging system because that wouldn't, that wouldn't even work before either. Let's just do a walk around of this thing. So I don't think I've ever done that on camera before, which is crazy, all things considered. So we'll start with the back. Uh, the bumper here on the back is in shambles. It is in really, really bad shape. It's all banged up, not straight at all. But uh, the tailgate is also pretty banged up, also not straight, but it does shut, it works, so that's cool. Uh, what The biggest bummer on this side of the truck is this damage here. This has been creased. I don't know how long it's been like that, but I could probably push that back out from the inside. I'm not 100% sure though. So, uh, as for rust, a lot of this rust is just on the surface. Uh, the rockers and everything underneath are fine. The only real rust that's very ugly is here on the inside. You can see this panel uh, beneath the rear window is pretty sad. So, it's got some holes in it. Uh, but the thing is, this panel, as far as I know, is not structural. So it's not like it's really compromised the integrity of the truck. It's just ugly and and gross looking. But uh, as for the rest of the interior, new carpet, O2J shifter out of that Mark IV Jetta, um, the original gauge cluster, all wired up. Everything works. Um, you can see the dash lights there. They're on. Uh, yeah. Harness to run the engine. And then up front, of course, we have our BEW code 1.9 TDI out of that 2004 Jetta. It's, it cleaned up so beautifully. I mean, this motor looks so great. I'm, I'm really, really excited with how things have come out so far. And again, although it doesn't run and drive, I think it, it's not that far off. Um, everything's hooked up hardware wise. So it's not like crazy, crazy far from being drivable. So, uh, the cooling system is roughed in, uh, there's coolant in it, uh, the heat works, everything seems to be functioning fine, so that is awesome. Uh, I think the biggest challenge up front is going to be the charge pipes because there's not a lot of room to work around. You know, you can see there on the, uh, this is the S&P uh, radiator and intercooler combo, but there's not a lot of room to work around the alternator and even on the bottom side there, it's really, really tight. So this has to come up and around and then through here between the um, cam belt cover and the strut tower. So through here and then down to the hot side of the turbo. So it's, it's really tight, but I think we'll be able to make it work no problem. At least that's what I'm hoping. <laughs> so anywho, yeah, that's the motor. Uh, again, most of this stuff is just roughed in. Like, these fuel lines are probably not gonna stay up there like that. I really don't like the way that looks. But small stuff, the engine harness runs, you know, along the top of the transmission through to the back um, on the firewall, underneath and behind the brake booster, and then up through the original engine harness location through the firewall. And then the rest of the power wires that run the uh, fuse block and the ECU combo itself, they're also run through this other um, wiring hole also in the firewall. These are both stock. I didn't punch any holes or anything in this, and there's no wiring left up here in the rain tray. 
So on this side, you can see where the wiring comes through on the firewall, and then everything's wired up through a late Westie fuse block, so everything works, which is super, super cool. Uh, you can see here, fuel pump primes, um, headlights work, even the intermittent wipers work, which is really, really cool. Uh, battery lights on, so the system charges when the engine's running. Yeah, intermittent wipers, which is really something else. I, uh, I've never had a Mark I where those have worked, which is really cool. Uh, let's see, let's see. The blower motor does work, it's brand new. From what I've seen, you can still buy blower motors for cars that did not have AC from the factory. And this is one of them. So it's just a heater box, literally just heat, um, which is cool because you can buy a fan for that and the resistor works. So all three speeds work, super cool. So cleaned it out, doesn't stink anymore. Uh, new fan, switch works just fine. So everything up here works. Uh, let's see, yeah, Mark IV shifter. I replaced the cables that go back to the park brake. Everything's new underneath. Uh, bearings, bushings, ball joints, all the brake parts, hoses. Um, the drums are brand new. The internals are rebuilt. The bearings are new. Everything that you can't see and can't really appreciate just from looking at the truck is new, which is really great for me, you know, somebody driving the truck, but uh, yeah, it's just been a, a tremendous amount of work. You can see up front here, uh, I rebuilt the struts. They have h &R lowering springs with heavy duty Bilstein strut inserts. Again, new bearings, uh, new brakes, everything's new. So this thing really should be good to go when it comes to uh, the first drive. So I'm very, very excited about that. But again, uh, a lot of the work that I've done isn't immediately obvious, and I, I like that. It's a very subtle thing, so I, it's just a nice little thing for me, you know? Uh, towards the back, you can see a two and a half inch tectonics tuning exhaust, but if you look closer, it's not connected to anything. Uh, the tailpipe fits, and that was pretty much it. The downpipe is on, but I'm gonna have an exhaust shop finish up the exhaust because uh, I quickly found out that the Tectonics tuning kit does not clear the uh, proportioning valve on the 1980 model pickups. Uh, among some other fitment issues, uh, I think the mid-pipe's bent. Doesn't matter. I'm going to try to return it. And just whatever. It was expensive. And it doesn't fit. So whatever. Get it out of here. Uh, get something that does fit. And yeah, apart from that, I built a ton of little... Uh, just odds and ends like this guy here, this bracket here on the fuel filter was something I made out of a Mark IV bracket, but also something that would fit down into this existing bracket on the Mark I uh, engine bay. So made that fit. Uh, this is the N75 valve. I cut this bracket out of the original um, N75 bracket on the Mark IV Jetta. So it's just by itself now. This thing was infested with mice and they had dragged the mice had dragged insulation all over the inside of this truck. So up in the headliner and which had fallen down into the A pillars. So of course, at some point the windshield leaked and that held moisture against the inside of the A pillar and rotted it all out. So I had to do a little rust repair because I think it was, well, it was very compromised. It was, it was very, very soft. So I cut it out, spliced in a new piece of metal now I am by no means a good body guy, so I finished it the best that I could and primed it and it, it looks okay, it's gonna be fine, but I hate that I had to do that. So it's just been a, it's been a whirlwind of a project, um, wrecking, wrecking cars, tearing them apart, scrapping some really nice stuff that it's just an absolute shame that it was wrecked. But there was just so many little things kept cropping up with this project. Nothing went smooth. Uh, it was nothing like the VR6 swap, which was actually very easy. Everything fit just like you would imagine. Uh, nothing really fit right, and uh, that's partially why it's still not finished. And that's the last thing I really want to talk about is, although this truck runs, Ha <laughs> ha.
<laughs> Not bad. It doesn't move, it doesn't drive, and it doesn't stop. All those systems are roughed in, but nothing is quite done yet. I just wanted to talk about what's been happening in the last year with this truck, and it's been a lot. But uh, that's where we are, so things aren't quite done yet, things aren't, uh, things aren't finished. But I think for the majority, the, the project as a whole, there's definitely a light at the end of the tunnel, which is, which is really great. Um, so yeah, I, I, I'm hoping within the next month I can have it done and on the road. And that'd be amazing because uh, as you know, the season here in Ohio is winding down. Uh, the weather will turn very soon. And as soon as that happens, well, it'll be inside until next spring. So thank you so much for watching. This has been an amazing project. And as you notice, there are some other things in the garage that I haven't talked about before here on the channel. And there are videos coming up very shortly covering all of these things and more. So thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Subscribe for more to come. And hey, by the way, we just crossed 10,000 subscribers on YouTube, which is unbelievable. 10,000 subscribers here on YouTube and over 170,000 followers on TikTok. Hopefully I'll be able to do this full time at some point and uh, that would really, really, really be great. Thank you for watching, have a great day and we'll see you in the next one.